Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for being MIA. I had a situation to where bills was catching up and things of that nature, and also a situation with this channel, right? So, um, pretty much I had to reevaluate the whole situation. And, you know, since I got experience in construction, I had to get back in that field and pretty much work as an independent contractor. Now, um, since I'm back into that field, as you can see, um, it's called Muhammad Construction. As you can see, I'm serving Hammond, California, and the Empire, in the Empire area, and also farther if it's worth it, right? So, as you can see from my card, I do demolition, drywall, paint, floors, framing, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, wire and cable pulling and running, cabinets, welding, Installation, handrail, gates, handyman work, home remodeling and repair, and etc. Right, and I also have individuals that you know know how to do it all as well. So these individuals um, will help me if if I need help from them. So as you can see, my phone number is listed, you know, down the bottom with my email, of course. So if you're around the area, um, go ahead and feel free to give me a call or email me. And even if you're not around the area, go ahead and call me and email as well and we'll see what we can do and um, we'll see if I can um, provide you the service, right? So um, just feel free to contact me about that and, um, as, you know, and go ahead and enjoy the interview from this gentleman and um, you guys just have a great day. I appreciate that very much. Bye-bye. You have a prepaid call from... An inmate at the Mule Creek State Prison, Ione, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using. Hey, how you doing, bro? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah, that, that will be nice on uh, um, both uh, PayPal's or for, uh, letters of, uh, for board. I uh, do go to board in 2025. Um, what's your nationality? Uh, Mexican. Were you ever part of any gangs, groups, or organizations? Yeah, I used to be from a street gang and a prison gang. Can you um, clarify exactly what those uh, gangs are? Well, on the street, I was from uh, Eastside Torrance. And in prison, I was from uh, associated from the of the Mexican Mafia. Okay, um, what, what do they call you? Okay, can you tell us about your childhood and how you grew up and um, how you were raised in the upbringing and uh, what, what eventually led you into um, joining this, your street gang? I, I'm, I was born uh, pretty much a single child, right? Um, I did have a older siblings, but they were in Mexico. But uh, being at home, I just, I just remember me being alone. And um, I was my a brother. Um, but we lacked communication at home. Uh, it's something that my parents didn't know how to give me because they never received it when they were young. So I don't blame them for that because they can't teach me something that they don't, they're not aware of um, or don't know. So that's something that we lacked at home is communication. And um, I didn't even know how to reach out to them. But um, that's just the way I grew up. And then seeing, walking to school and seeing, um, you know, gang members out there all about the same age and having fun and I knew that I wanted to be part of them. I wanted to feel some sort of brotherhood because I didn't have no one at home. Um, when finally my mom did get uh, pregnant and had a, a child, uh, he was born with a, a murmur, just a little hole in his, in his heart, you know, in Del Centro. So he needed special attention and um, I started getting jealous. And, uh, I remember one time I tried to choke. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Uh, I tried to choke him and I was trying to kill him because he was taking up affection from my parents. And the only way I got affection or some attention from my parents is if I picked it up. And, you know, Mexicans always beat their kids because they believe that's the right way to correct a child. So I got beat um, constantly, you know. Um, I remember going out with some resentment towards them for that, um, but I 
knew that I wanted to be part of a gang because I, I see gang members as something they glorify, something glorified. Like, you know, people fear them, people uh, can't admire them for some reason. And I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to feel that. So, I remember um, starting hanging out with them and I have older cousins from the gang and they try to stop me because they told me that there's only three ways to um, that you get in a, in a gang and you end up dead in a wheelchair, or if you're lucky, you end up um, with life in prison. Um, so if you're lucky, you end up with life in prison. Is that is the best outcome that uh, I was told. But I still wanted to be part of them. And at the age of 16, I finally joined the gang. And, uh, you know, in order for me to finally to accept and I, I had to commit crimes. I can't just beat them and not try to not commit crimes. So I had to commit them and I felt accepted. Um, fast forwarding, uh, I did uh, get uh, arrested for uh, shooting at a person. Um, they tried to supposedly run me over, but uh, he was just trying to scare me. He wasn't going to do it. But I had a gun and I took it out and I shot him. I ended up going to prison to pick up a number and and uh, I went to Chino State Prison and I was released. When I got out I, I felt like more acceptance because when I did the shooting I had a, I had a, one of my homeboys with me and I didn't I didn't rat him out. I didn't I didn't snitch. So the gang seen that as something that to admire and they accepted me really good at once I got out but uh, I, I still had to continue committing crimes and then I became a leader but even if you're a leader or you're considered a leader you still have to follow something and even though I wasn't following nobody I was still following the rules of a game so all this time that I thought I was a leader I was really a follower um I remember that uh, I met a girl and, uh, you know, she uh, got pregnant. And uh, I was happy because uh, that was going to be my uh, my ticket out, you know, out of the gang. And I was going to give this little girl uh, an affection that I didn't receive at home. But I remember that uh, we were going to go take pictures at the mall and, uh, to show her stomach, and um, I remember that we were, I ran into some rival gang members, and because I had a jersey that I didn't buy in my gang, um, they took me to the parking lot and they beat me up, and um, it was so bad that uh, I couldn't really see the whole thing, but I remember I was on the floor and I was trying to look towards where she was, and I see her running towards me to try to stop the, the, the beating. Um, and I could see that they hit her. But I couldn't see more. Um, and, and we lost the baby. We lost the baby because of something that I believe I caused. If I wouldn't have wore that jersey, maybe that wouldn't have happened. But I wanted to still represent my gang. I couldn't let it go. Um, so, I remember uh, uh, December of 2000, while I was at a park, um, they tried to give the, a gun to my nephew. And um, there were, he was supposed to go do a shooting right there at the park because the rival gang member was there. And uh, I took the gun away. And I went in. And I shot him on the steam because I believe he was a rival gang member. Um, I remember I ran away. Um, I didn't get caught that day. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. The next day, I remember uh, they told me that my was in the park and um, he was making his girlfriend give him oral sex in front of a lot of little kids. And when I heard this, I wanted to retaliate. And when I found out he was inside of uh, what we consider the neighborhood territory. I went back in there and I beat 
beat up Fernando Mahal, you know, I beat up Benjamin Mahal, and then I ran out the next day and they caught me. And I was in LA County, and I remember seeing that there was a bigger gang than just my gang. And that was the, the Sureños. Um, I seen the way they did politics and how that was glorified. And I remember I wanted to be part of them too. So I kept raising my hand, holding drugs, holding knives, selling drugs, beating up people, you know, beating them off in riots. Um, I raised my hand for everything because I wanted to feel accepted. Um, and I couldn't open up to my parents and let them know how I felt, you know, because obviously a lot of those times I was I was scared uh, that I would have got stabbed or something would have happened. But, you know, they teach you not to show fear. Um, while I was there, I, I, like I said, I did a lot of stuff. I ended up getting 64 years to life for the shooting of Fernando the beating of uh, Benjamin. I went to prison and I kept raising my hand because this was this other gang that was bigger. It was like a man. They control a lot of the prisons in California. Um, I were raising my hand someone had to go, I raised my hand to stab him, and I stabbed this person. So I ended up going to solitary confinement for, it was supposed to be two and a half years for a stabbing. And, um, when I was there, I get a, I get a, a, a note from one of my friends, an uh, MM member, telling me that I had to stab myself. And, um, I went ahead and stabbed him. I didn't question it, you know. That's just what you do in here. You don't question things sometimes. And I stabbed him. Come to find out it was the wrong call. They tried to say to myself, he was a, a snitch when he wasn't. So, the heaven member, um, he tried to clean his, his back. So he sent two people to stab me. Hoping that I would have rolled it up or leave the gang. And he would have just thrown everything on me, but I did it. Um, I got stabbed 11 times for that. And come to find out that he wasn't a, my cellular at that time that I stabbed wasn't a snitch. Um, they didn't even apologize to me. And told me that they apologized and they said sorry for stabbing me for a wrong call. That person never did. He ended up being my neighbor in the shoe in a validated building. Um, one of his brothers did apologize on behalf of him, but the person that made that call never, never apologized to me. Um, at that time I was hurt. I felt betrayed because I gave everything to this gang and that's how they repaid me. I did him a favor and he repaid me by stabbing me. Um, I had no more love for the sewer or for the MA because I didn't see no loyalty there. Um, I remembered uh, uh, that I decided to, to leave the gang and it took a TV show of PBS where they had seen a lifer uh, getting uh, released. He made a promise to his daughter that he was gonna stay out of trouble. And I had just made a phone call, my very first phone call in 11 years um, to my mother on Mother's Day. I remember the date was May 10th of 2015. I'm sorry, 16. And um, I remember I told her that um, I was going to leave the game, you know. And um, I, had a, I had a ride from the you know, prison bus from Pelican Bay Shoe all the way to Kern Valley uh, State Prison. And uh, I asked God if he would give me the chance, give me a sign if it was the right choice to leave the game.